Good morning, everybody. We've got a little bit of a problem here in the household. This morning, we were running a load of wash, as we often are, and uh, my wife was in here brushing her teeth with an electric toothbrush, and she said she heard the washing machine make what she described as a grinding noise, and when I tried to get more specifics out of her, she explained to me that she was brushing her teeth with the electric toothbrush, so between that noise and this noise, she wasn't positive exactly what it sounded like. She just knew it didn't sound right. And then she noticed it never went into its spin cycle. When the washer finished uh, and uh, she went to take the, wa uh, the wash out, the wash was soaking wet. So now we tried putting it um, on final spin, you know, rotating it back around to the final spin position and trying that. And what we're finding is when it's in the mode where it's supposed to be doing that, it will still do the tumble, the final tumbling, which tells me the motor's good because the same motor that's responsible for spinning is the motor that's responsible for uh, the tumbling. So it can't be that. But we're also noticing that if it's in a certain area, Right there. I don't know if you can hear that hum. I don't recall hearing that hum before. And what I'm betting is, I'm betting that that hum is the water pump that's responsible for pumping out the water. And that for some reason it's not pumping water. And if it can't pump the water out, then it's not going to want to... Uh, go to the next cycle is what I believe. I don't think it starts to spin until the water is out. So there's a water level sensor in there somewhere and the water has to be out of there and that's also why everything's soaking wet in there. So there's not a lot of water in there because these front load washers by design to be uh, environmentally responsible are, you know, they use very little water. But uh, we're gonna check out what's going on with the pump and the pump on this model is located right up in the front here. So what's nice, is if we're lucky, I can actually affect this repair without taking this out of the closet we have it and we have it stacked in here. And uh, back when I was building this house and we knew we were gonna stack the washer and dryer in here, I, I built this platform and I put a, a pan and there's a drain that runs all the way down to the basement. Um, and I, you know, now you go buy a new washing machine today and all the manufacturers have figured out that nobody likes to stoop way down low, especially if you're over six feet tall like me, to get the wash in and out of the washing machine. So now washing machines all come with that big pedestal on the bottom and they've actually, you know, usually they put a drawer in there so you can put your uh, store stuff in there. So anyways, without further ado, uh, this pan flexes just enough for me to sneak my quarter inch nut driver in there and get the, those screws out. All right, so here's the water pump. And uh, basically you've got this big inlet suction side right here on this back side here. That's actually goes into right into the suction. And then this is the uh, discharge line right here. And this line right here is, is plenty big enough that occasionally you can get something that makes its way between the thin little uh, um, area between the actual rotating drum and the wall and if something works its way down into this pump it can jam the impeller and stop the pump from pumping and then that basically causes the problem we've got right now so hopefully that's all we're dealing with here that would be nice I don't know if we're gonna be that lucky but yeah that's what's going on pump's trying to run and it can't so that's good news that means more than likely what we've got is we've got something stuck in the pump that I could just take out and uh, get us back in business now the problem is there's water in there so uh, if I just take this hose clamp off and take this suction off to try and take something out of there I run the risk of uh, flooding things and I don't want to rely on even though I've got a pan under here, uh, I really don't feel like potentially flooding all of that uh, tray with water because then that's just uh, 
as you can see it's pretty disgusting in there because I did have a leak on this washing machine and it was a very small minor leak so we didn't notice it right away and so water was sitting in this tray and any dust and anything that would stick to it would kind of sit in there and get kind of really gross and we haven't cleaned the tray out because well it's underneath the very heavy washing machine by the way the leak that I had with the washing machine actually was the actual uh, the whole drum assembly uh, is in two halves and there are a whole series of screws that go around the whole perimeter of the drum that are uh, that, that clamp the two halves together with a seal in there and it, and what can happen over time is those can loosen so all I had to do was actually tighten all of those screws going all the way around and I was able to uh, to affect repair that way as a matter of fact you can actually see I think yeah well, it's kind of dark in there, so you're not going to see it, but actually down here, you can actually see the bottom screws. And it's nice and dry in there now, so I know that's not leaking any longer. So I got the door on the front here open, and you can see the water levels all the way up here. It's not going anywhere, so there's no way that I'm going to open that hose up in the bottom there and dump all of that water out. Alright, so I've got my wet-dry shop vac, and I took the uh, particulate filter out of it, so it's... Uh, and emptied it out so I can use it in the wet mode and I've got my hearing protection on because these are kind of like high-pitched whiny and not good for your ears so I try and wear hearing protection when I use these shop vacs. So now I'm just gonna start by sucking out the water that's uh, in the uh, actual tub there and then uh, what I'll do is when I disconnect that hose I'll have the uh, shop vac running to suck out any water that comes out I'm going to talk fast because I want to try and keep that shop vac running, but you can't hear me with it running. The reason why is because water continues to come down in here. What's happening is the clothes are still draining and there's still some water running down in there. But if you're real lucky, you'll be able to reach your finger in once you get that suction line off and reach in there and feel something, you know, stuck in there and get it out. Now, in my case, while I was sucking all the water out. I put the hose right on the back here, sucked the water out of the pump in this line. And when I did that, I definitely heard something got picked up by the, uh, by the vacuum cleaner. But I still think there might be something in there. I can actually turn this on and hear the pump. I've got to have it right in the right spot on the uh, mode here. Oh, that's right. I got the door open. I forgot. <laughs> I probably did have it in the right spot. And it just wasn't coming on because of the motor. Oh, uh, door open. There we go. See, it, start, it started to spin because uh, I have removed the water so the water level sensor is now sensing that it's empty and it can start its spin but I don't want it to spin but did you hear when that pump started it sounded like it was grinding something there is something inside that housing still so unfortunately I have to see if I can get it out I think to make my life easier I'm going to uh, actually run it on the spin cycle and uh, oh by the way when you're messing around in here the, the uh, washing machine should be unplugged so that's a uh, that's your warning. Don't get electrocuted and try and blame me because this should all be unplugged when you're working in here. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this plug. You have to squeeze this connector and pull this out. Now I've disconnected the power to the to the water pump. And the reason why I did that is because I don't want that water pump to continue to try and run with whatever it is that's jammed in there, uh, jammed in there, because I could damage the impeller if I haven't already done so. <laughs> So now, while it's in its spin cycle, I'm going to run the shop vac, and the shop vac is going to be sucking the water out that gets uh, thrown into the uh, this pipe here by the centrifugal force of the spin. So it's going to do that, do its thing. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> oh, a word of warning. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you empty your shop vac from the initial, uh, uh, unless you get a really big shop vac, 
this one, I forgot how many gallons this one is, but it was uh, pretty full. And what happened was it filled up right when it was in the spin cycle. As soon as it started its spin cycle, it was throwing quite a bit of water out of there. And uh, what happened was my shop vac filled up. So the little float that shuts off the uh, shop vac activated and uh, I had a minor flood there. So I've now emptied the shop vac and um, I'm ready to uh, suck that water out that got in there. And, you know, luckily for me, I've got this pan underneath here and I, like I said, I got a drain. But uh, that's, uh, you definitely don't want that to happen if you don't have anything underneath, uh, if you don't have a pan underneath your washing machine. Um, and another note, this is what I heard get sucked up out of the pump. 25 cents, one quarter. One of my three sons probably had a quarter in his pants pocket because I always take my change out before I take my pants off and put them in the hamper. So one of the kids got hold of a little money somewhere and kept it in his pocket and didn't check his pockets and uh, put it in the wash. And so I wouldn't be surprised if there's a quarter here. There's probably uh, the other stuff that's jammed in there. There's probably some other coins. So um, let me get this going. All right, so uh, it did it did a spin cycle, and now it's gone back to this uh, tossing the clothes back and forth deal it tends to do. It kind of alternates back and forth be between those two things before it finally finishes the cycle. But I don't know if you noticed, but there was a lot of uh, suds in the water there, and that's probably partly because the uh, uh, with the pump not working correctly, it probably didn't do a a correct rinse cycle, but another problem is, let's see how much water comes out now. Right, so this is uh, probably the final spin it just started, and there's hardly any water coming out now, so I think I got most of it out. But uh, what I started to say was, the other problem is that my wife insists on using too much uh, laundry detergent. She uses liquid laundry detergent, she uses too much. <laughs> She uses the measuring cup on the top of the detergent bottle and what I can't seem to get her to understand is the logic behind how these things work. These washing machines wash very efficiently with much less water than a top load. Oh, oh I've got a gusher. Okay, the uh, cycle has finished, so now I can concentrate. I've taken this uh, discharge hose off, and if I reach my finger in here, I can just feel something in the bottom there on the discharge side. So what's happening is that's sitting underneath the edge of the impeller. That's why the impeller was getting stuck on something, but I can't quite get it to come out that way. But I'm going to see if I can get it to uh, get sucked out by the hose. I don't feel that part. I didn't hear it get sucked up, but it must have because I don't really feel it uh, when I um, stick my finger in there anymore. But I think there's still something going on here because that pump impeller doesn't seem to turn really freely. I wonder if there's something stuck around the shaft so I think I still want to take that out so um, what I got to do is I got to get a 5 16 inch nut driver to take out the two screws that mount the pump down to the floor of the washing machine and again just a reminder we're doing this with the machine unplugged for safety and we've got the plug unplugged from the pump and I've got the two bolts out and the whole assembly actually lifts right out. This one's been in there so long it's a little stuck. It's got these little uh, rubber isolation feet to keep the uh, vibration noise of the pump as it's running down to a minimum. There we go. And what do we have here? 
the heck is that? That's a token. Where the hell did you get that? <sighs> it's got to be my nine-year-old. He's about to turn ten. And he is a little collector of little things. This is a no cash value token. I have no idea where he got this, but... Ah, oh, I'm going to have a long talk with that boy when he gets home. Well, either one or two things is going on here. Either I'm completely baffled by how this pump is supposed to work, or all the veins of the pump are broken off and have disappeared. Probably down the drain. Because that, I could stick my finger right in there and basically there's like way too much clearance in there and I don't really see how that impeller would do anything. So I think I'm gonna have to take this apart and do some closer inspection. Oh, that's dirty pool. Allen head screws. I gotta go back down and get more tools. I think I'll just take this down to the basement. You know, a while back, my friend got rid of his washing machine and because uh, he bought a new one because it wouldn't drain and I ended up finding out what was wrong with it I think it was the door latch mechanism or something um, but anyways I ended up scrapping that washing machine and it was a Frigidaire Gallery series and it was so similar in so many ways to my washing machine uh, which is a Kenmore probably made by Frigidaire for Sears that um, I ended up keeping most of the parts, so I actually thought maybe I had a spare pump, but unfortunately they're very similar, but they're going to be just different enough that I'm not going to be able to swap them out. Uh, this has got like almost like an open mode. This is your, looks like an earlier version. Got a cooling fan on the back even. Uh, a little bit beefier. Looks like plumbing wise it would hook up just fine. This has got a cheesier plastic motor housing on the back but I think I'm not positive but I think the uh, motor plug is not going to work I think it's different I don't know it's on the side but it looks like maybe it is the same shape oh. no that's a well I'm not sure I'll have to check that out well if that plugs onto there I might be tempted to make this work anyways the, uh, the other problem is the spacing here uh, is different from the spacing here. So, but looking at this impeller, sure looks like I think the uh, fins. This impeller inside here is a different style, but it does have these long veins on it that I don't see present <laughs> on my. So I'll take this apart. Because it looks like they sheared off so cleanly and all in the same spot. Now those were T15 Torx screws. When I looked at them under the better light, I could see that. So I got the guard and everything off. And actually, the the mounting bracket, uh, the plastic mounting bracket, actually comes off this pump. Unfortunately, it's not going to uh, not going to be able to be installed on this pump. But anyways, I'm wondering when you order a new pump, how much of this you even get. So. Just pop this open. Got an O-ring in there that acts as the seal, and we got some garbage in there. So I think what I was getting at is I think that there's supposed to be veins on this that are gone. And it's just funny to me how they all broke in almost the same exact spot. That one looks like it might be a little shorter. I'm wondering whether or not any of these were already missing. Just a note, when I go to rotate this, it felt weird to me, and now I, I see that the reason why is because this is a special permanent magnet type motor. Uh, it's probably very low energy consumption by design. And it's uh, not going to tell me, oh yeah, 88 watts. So here's the old, good old design. This I believe is what they call a shaded pole AC motor, and you can see this one is 110 watts, so so they're basically saving you about 22 watts of energy consumption when this motor is running. So uh, so th this washing uh, washing machine is obviously the newer one. Mine is newer than than this one. 
but I am uh, still up the creek without a paddle unless I want to just mount this in there and you know hope for the best well I did manage to get a little bit of luck the uh, plug design had not changed so that plug plugged right in on this old pump and the plumbing works just fine as far as those connections go and it's kind of a pain to get these clips in this uh, rubber bellows thing back on this hose being stiffer is a little easier and being in the front what I do is I had the pump turned sideways before I you know connected the plug and everything and kind of worked on it from the side and then moved into position and then put this hose on so the only uh, real problem I see with this mounting is the fact that the spacing is different on the feet here so my problem is I can't put this screw in and because uh, it, it won't go anywhere now I think those are actually self-tapping screws so I could actually drill probably drill a hole there and put these screws in and they look like they might be self-tapping I don't know but this is only a temporary fix I think I'm gonna order the correct pump but uh, I've got the uh, unit plug back in yeah so we don't like the sound but uh, that's what we're gonna live with because it's vibrating like heck because I can't properly mount it Let's see if I that's how it should be mounted and that fan blade is precariously close to this back here so not ideal but it should work Okay, I've unloaded the washing machine and I'm just gonna run a short wash to test out the pump. All right, I've got enough water in there now. I'm not gonna wait for it to finish filling. Um, I'm gonna cheat by uh, rotating this outer ring so that it goes to a, uh, a drain cycle. So I've rotated this now around to final spin and you should be able to get that pump to start in a minute I rotate this outer ring manually there we go the pump has started sound bad at all all right so the pump is running and it's on a spin cycle so I'll come back when it's done open it up and make sure it got all the water okay the cycle finished and it pumped out all the water as best as I could tell and uh, check down around here and I don't have any leaks this is actually a while ago since it stopped running and this is already starting to dry out in here so I think this is going to be a good uh, good temporary fix until we can uh, get the exact pump replacement and uh, depending on how much that ends up costing I may end up just uh, taking my uh, 90 degree drill uh, which will fit in here and uh, drilling a new hole and getting a longer self-tapping screw and permanently mounting this in here as a replacement because this is already an older washing machine we've got quite a years of use out of this thing and uh, you know, with this repair, I'm going to milk some more time out of it, but I really don't want to get into dumping a whole lot of money into it. Well, I went online and this pump has been, uh, well, actually, my original pump has been replaced by a newer version. And uh, that pump is like $85 on the Sears website, uh, Sears Parts website. You can get an aftermarket new pump for as little as $35 on eBay. Uh, you can get an original Frigidaire pump new on eBay for as little as 50 bucks but uh, I decided since I had this pump and it wasn't being used for anything else anyways I'm just gonna go with this so I re-drilled a hole I used a right angle drill 
Got a right angle drill right there that gave me enough clearance to get in here and make that hole. And uh, I mounted it. And now it sounds good. It doesn't vibrate excessively. I don't have to worry about it um, moving out of position and ruining this fan blade on the back here. So I'm just going to put this cover back on and we'll call this repair done. I love that the, uh, the whole washer uh, tumbling system, uh, shut up.